Good morning, wizards, and happy Thursday, June 4th of virtual learning. We only have two days left of the school year, wizards. Hooray! So we got Thursday and Friday. I want to uh, remind everybody that we will have Zoom session, our final Zoom session of the year. Uh, we'll be um, on Monday and Tuesday. Monday, I'll be Zooming with all the girls from 10 to 10.30 and with all the boys from 10.30 to 11. Then on Tuesday at 10 o'clock, June 9th, we'll try to do an all-class Zoom session with everybody involved. Um, and as a reminder, um, I will have control over muting, so um, please follow my directions carefully. I'll be giving everybody a chance to talk, but... Um, if we all are talking at once, I'll have to mute some of you. So I think, you know, you boys and girls understand that. So just uh, that Tuesday one's going to be quite a treat to see how we all pull that off. So um, Zooming together. All right. So um, I'm happy you got those Zoom session invites. If you didn't, once again, have your parents email me. Uh, we continue our virtual slides this week that are focusing on specials. Okay, if you remember back, we did art on Monday. Tuesday was guidance. Wednesday was library. And today, Thursday, is music um, and the transition from Ben Franklin to Riverside. So you will have, see links with Mrs. Nordstrom introducing the new uh, music teacher that you will have uh, over at Riverside. Um, Mrs. Nordstrom, I got to give her credit, she's been on those slides and all the videos, it's almost like every day she's sending one of music. So um, she's been on top of this virtual learning. So music today, and then we'll end the year with uh, Fayette on Friday. Those will be our last slides. Those will be my last videos. And then Monday, Tuesday, Zoom. Wednesday, pick up supplies. So uh, coming to an end in this crazy, crazy year, Wizards, of virtual learning. Who would have thought? March 11th, I believe, Wednesday was the last time we were all together in school. Well, we're doing the best we can. Two more days, and then you get the summer to yourself, and then hopefully you will be on your way to Riverside. Um, all right, so I'm encouraging all the parents and all the students to check the Ben Franklin website for important announcements from uh, Mrs. Hansen as we get wrap up the school year here with only you know a few days left of the school year. All right, on to the robber hots and plots. I do not think that we'll be able to get through the whole book this year, but that'll probably give you some incentive to make sure you check it out next year at Riverside. I know a lot of people did check out the book this year at Ben Franklin. This is the further adventures of the robber hots and plots. The next chapter is in reverse. Casper and Supple un unwound their prisoner. They felt dreadfully sorry for poor Mr. Dimple Moser. They helped him back into his uniform, repeating dozens of times how bad they felt about their mistake. Come to think of it, said Casper thoughtfully, it's all the cleaner's fault. Who would ever have expected them to get your uniform done so quickly in the first place? Hmm, grunted Chief Inspector Dimple Moser. Life's full of these little surprises. That Hudson Plots has more luck than sense. I must say, you two made a nice job of bundling me up, even if it wasn't him. Oh, well, let's forget it. We'd better make ourselves as comfortable as possible and go to sleep. Someone will come along soon in the morning and get us out of this fire station. In the morning, said Casper, we can't wait that long. Why not? Because of Grandmother, Seppel replied. Hudson Plots plans to do something to her. He told us so, so himself. So there's no time to lose, Casper insisted. We just have to get out of here. Of course, Mr. Dimper, Mr. Dimplemoser saw the point of that. They rattled the door as hard as they could. They tried to break off the bars over the window. They knocked on the walls to try to find thin places, but no luck. Suppose we dig a tunnel under the door, Seppel suggested. I found something over there we could use to dig. He brought two spades. A spade is something you dig within a garden. 
he brought two spades and a pick from the corner of the fire station. It turned out to be very hard work. Evidently, Hudson Plotz knew why he couldn't escape that way. The floor of the fire station was as hard as a rock, and the space between the door and the fire engine was so narrow that only one of them could dig in at a time. And digging even for one person was difficult. He kept bumping into things every time that he moved. Why don't we push the fire engine back a bit, suggested Mr. Dimplemoser after a while. There's a lot of space behind it. Do you think we could, asked Casper. It might be too heavy for us. Too heavy? The chief inspector laughed. Don't forget, every motor vehicle has an engine and a gear for reverse. What about the ignition key, though, asked Supple. We don't need the ignition key, said Mr. Dimplemoser. We can start it with the crank. It's lying in its usual place under the driver's seat. Every ever ready brigades, ever ready that should be everyone's motto, especially in the fire brigade. He took off his sword, climbed into the fire engine, and sat behind the steering wheel. Then he handed them the crank. Now then, off you go. Casper and Supple did their best to start the fire engine. They turned the handle once, they turned it twice. Wizards, I just want to mention that years ago in old cars, there'd be sometimes there'd be a crank in the front of the car where the hood would be, and you would turn it really hard, and that would turn over the engine. So this is an old fire truck. They turn it once, they turn it twice, and finally the fourth time they knocked their heads together. The sixth time the handle sprang back and hit Seppel's left thumb. Keep going, keep going, Mr. Dimplemoser urged them. Don't tell me you your arms are getting tired already. Casper and Seppel gritted their teeth and kept turning the handle. <laughs> and finally, on the twelfth attempt, they did it. The engine roared into life. Mr. Dimplemoser put it in reverse, and he stepped on the gas. The fire engine did not budge. The handbrake, shouted Casper and Seppel. The handbrake. What's that? Mr. Dimplemoser shouted back. Can't hear a thing with all this racket. The handbrake. At last, Mr. Dimplemoser got the message. He released the handbrake inside the fire truck, and the next moment the fire engine took a mighty leap backward. So he releases the brake, it's in reverse, and it flies backward right into the back of the fire station. So right when he released that brake, and they had it in reverse, it went too fast to the back of the fire station, and it crashed. If you look closely, you can see Chief Inspector Dimplemoser in the driver's seat, Casper and Seppel, Ducking after it hits the back wall. And then if you look closely, wizards, you can see the crank I'm talking about right by Seppel's head there that they would use years ago to try to turn over an engine that wouldn't start. So this is not going well. Put in reverse. Now they got a big hole in the fire station. That's where we'll stop for today, wizards. See if we get to the bottom of that on Friday morning. So that's it for today. Enjoy your music day. Thursday, June 4th, music with Mrs. Nordstrom, transitioning to the Riverside, finding out more about the music feature there. And the next time you see me will be the last day of school. Um, virtual learning, Friday, uh, June 5th, will be the last day of slides and videos from Mr. Wisner. So until then, the last day of school, this is Mr. Wisner saying goodbye, wizards. So long, everybody.